Welcome! In this multi-part series, we'll take a look at how various C-sharp data structures can make your Unity game dev life easier. You'll learn how each data structure works, what their pros and cons are, how and when to use them, and we'll go over lots of example use cases. We'll also check out at a high level how they work internally. This guide is suitable for beginners, but should also contain a bunch of interesting bits and pieces for intermediate game devs, especially if you don't have a formal computer science education or if you're new to Unity and C Sharp. Quick note, you can use data structures to optimize your code's performance in terms of runtime and memory usage. So we'll definitely cover a bit of that, but the focus of this video series is on using them to make your game dev life easier. So data structures, what are they exactly? A data structure is a collection of data values, the relationships among them, and the functions and operations that can be applied to the data. All right, that sounds kind of scientific and dry. Let's just say you can use them to store, organize, and access all kinds of data in various ways. For example, an array is a simple and common data structure that lets you store elements of a specific type in a specific order. But there are more data structures than just arrays and lists, and each is specialized in doing specific things, so they can be super useful programming tools, making your code shorter, simpler, safer, faster, more concise, and more readable. I also claim you can utilize them effectively even as a programming beginner. One goal of this video series is to give you a first intuition on how the covered data structures can be useful, so you'll hopefully spot use cases in your own code more easily. Almost all the data structures in this video series are so-called generic collections, meaning that they can hold any data type like numbers, strings, game objects, your own classes, and so on, which is why they are called generic. However, the contained elements must all be of the same type and you need to specify that type when declaring the data structure. If you're really professional, you'd say they are strongly typed. Usually in the API reference, the data structures type is simply represented as T for type, and you would replace the T with the type you want to store. Technically, the array works a bit differently since it's more of a native C-sharp feature, while the other collections live in the system collections generic namespace. So whenever you want to use them, you need to add a using declaration at the top of your file. That said, there are also non-generic equivalents for these data structures, but they're usually slower, less safe, and require you to write more code, so we're not covering those. So let's start out with arrays. Here's how you can define one that can hold exactly three integers. The elements are always kept in a specific order, and each has an index to access it. Of course, you can store anything you like in them, for example, game objects, 3D positions, or any of your own classes. You can also define and fill in the array in one step if you like. Anyway, now you can easily access or modify individual elements in the array. In this case, we loop over all high scores in our array, assuming each is for a different level, and we print that high score and then reset it to zero. As I mentioned, internally, the array is a bit different from the other collections we'll cover. While all the other collections are directly implemented classes that you can declare like any other class, Arrays have an abstract base class. That means we can't actually declare such a class directly like this, but any array we define like we correctly do at the top derives from the class so we can use all its properties and methods. In this example, we use that class's length property. It provides many other methods and properties, and for accessing and modifying values, you could alternatively use the getValue and setValue methods defined by the array base class. Anyway, there is a significant drawback to arrays. As opposed to lists, their capacity is fixed and you cannot easily extend them to add more elements once they're declared. In fact, to do so, you would have to copy the entire array to a new array with a larger capacity to then add your new element. The fact that arrays can't be extended makes them a lot less flexible than lists, which we will get to in a moment, but also a bit more memory efficient in many cases because they never take up more memory than they need. You can safely use an array if you don't need to add elements at any point during your game's runtime, which could, for example, be the case for an array that holds all your level names. But on the other hand, maybe you later decide to add a level editor to your game, letting players create their own levels, meaning you would need an extensible data structure. You can always switch to a list in such cases, or if you don't have a strong reason to use an array, you can just use a list right away, which I tend to prefer because I'm lazy. Anyway, if performance is a big concern for your game and you need to store a really large but fixed number of elements, then an array might still be the better choice. 
So lists are very similar to arrays. They're basically a more convenient and flexible version of them, one key feature being their extensibility. So you can easily add elements at any time. In fact, if we look at the internal implementation of the list data structure, we find that it uses an array under the hood. Whenever the internal array's capacity is reached, meaning it is full of data, the list will create a new array that is twice as big as the previous one and copy over the elements from that old array. By the way, the factor by which the array capacity increases is called growth factor, and it depends on the programming language and the respective implementation of the list data structure. But most implementations use factor 2, like Unity's C-sharp implementation or factor 1.5. Looking over the list implementation in general, there is a lot of helpful code that can make your own code shorter and safer, like for example checking bounds you pass into any of the methods. And this is another reason you might want to prefer an array in some performance critical cases. The list just does a lot more things. However, in most cases, especially for small lists, this really shouldn't be a concern. Anyway, back to utilizing lists in your code. Here's how you define one. Again, as a simple example, we just keep a bunch of integer numbers in the list, but we can store anything like game objects or colliders. Note also that we don't need to specify the size of the list like we had to do for arrays. As we just saw in the implementation, it just automatically adjusts. So let's check out a real world example. I am currently building a little game called OnTrack. In short, you have to operate the railway switches in order to direct trains to a depot of the same color, and if a train reaches a wrong depot, the player loses a life. To keep track of the UI elements that represent the player's remaining lives, I use a list in my UI panel that holds the heart sprites. In order to update the heart's colors according to the player's currently remaining lives, the UI panel provides an update lives function, which is triggered by an event when the number of remaining lives is updated. On track is still work in progress and I think the number of lives you have may vary by level, so a list is more flexible and convenient than a fixed size array. I'm also totally not concerned about performance for this tiny little list that I only occasionally update, so it doesn't matter anyway. Note, in this case, I definitely need a data structure that keeps my elements ordered, like arrays and lists will do, so that I can remove hearts from the right as the player loses lives. This is a key difference compared to, for example, hash sets and dictionaries, which we will cover in the next videos and which is where things will get more specialized and hopefully more interesting if you were already familiar with arrays and lists. Check this video's description for links to all videos in the series or the full playlist. Drop a comment below if I missed anything or if you have more questions. Thanks for watching.